Hello and welcome to News Across Nigeria. I'm Anne Umawado. Coming up on the program today. More Nigerians make their return trip from the situations in Libya. Enugu state government encourages more women to set up businesses. And schools in Yobe State get an upgrade. Welcome once again to News Across Nigeria. Another set of 164 Nigerian returnees from Libya have been brought back into the country by the International Organization for Migration, IOM, in the early hours of today. The returnees comprise of 155 male adults, two male children, five female adults, one female child, and a female infant. NEMA's Southwest Zonal Coordinator, Alhaji Suleiman Yakubu, who received the returnees on behalf of the federal government, thanked the IOM and the EU for their humanitarianism. He also advised the returnees to learn from the bitter lessons they have learned in the course of their unpalatable surgeon and to make better use of opportunities around in the country. He implored the returnees to make use of facilities available for self-empowerment which the federal government and the state governments are providing. Meanwhile, efforts are ongoing to stop the illegal migration of young Nigerians. The National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons and the Adult State Government are using different methods, but with the same goal in mind to fight the menace. The plight of Nigerians and other African migrants stranded in Libya has led to almost daily discussions on how to stop thousands of young people from embarking on dangerous journeys in a bid to get a better life in Europe. While some have been caught in the web of human trafficking, others voluntarily leave everything behind, only to end up tortured and enslaved. As part of its campaign against the menace, the National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons is once again warning that it's a crime to organize foreign travels which promotes prostitution or other reasons not known to the victim. We continue to mount this campaign that our people get to be well informed about the dangers and risks that are associated with this journey. Most of our students, young ones today, they have believed that they can only make it when they get out of the shores of Nigeria. So we want to make them believe in Nigeria. We want to make them believe in Africa. We want to make them feel that here is home and not a transit. Because we have discovered in the past that our young ones have considered our nations as a transit. And when a nation is a transit, it's very dangerous. Meanwhile, the Edo State Government believes the church is a critical stakeholder in the fight against human trafficking. Governor Godwin Obasaki recently met with some clergymen in Benin City, the state capital, where all agreed that trafficking must be stopped. The government of Edo State has um, taken the war on human trafficking um, to the next level. And one of the initiatives is to involve very senior members of um, <coughs> the clergy, of the Christian faith, in our fight. You know, this has to be fought at every level, at the spiritual and at the physical level. So this morning, we've assembled for a breakfast meeting with very, very senior religious the Christian religious leaders in the state to discuss our strategies with them on tackling the scourge of human trafficking and slavery. The clergymen are also taking up this challenge and they say the church is prepared to take a leading role until trafficking ends. As church leaders, we are in complete support with uh, the Edo State government in dealing with human trafficking that has become a very serious evil in our land. Um, the federal government is against it. Edo State government and the good people of Edo State are against it. And the Bible, God himself, is against it. So the Church of Jesus Christ, the entire body of Christ, even Christian Association of Nigeria, Edo State, we are against it. And so we are standing with His Excellency, the governor of Edo State, and this government of Edo State to see how human trafficking can be dealt with leaving its nether roots nor branch in our state 
and um, beyond the state, even our nation. In the past few weeks, hundreds of trafficked or voluntary Nigerian migrants have returned from their unsuccessful yet dangerous attempts to get to Europe. Thousands remain trapped in Libyan transit camps waiting to be brought back home. Women in Enugu state have been urged to take up the challenge of doing business for capacity building and social development. And this is coming from the state government at the inaugural session of women in business organized by the Enugu Small and Medium Enterprise Center in partnership with the Enugu State Chamber of Commerce, Mines and Industry to enlighten women on available business opportunities and government support programs. The state governor, Ifan Yugwani, represented by his special advisor on SME and investment promotion, Anayo Agu, says the efforts is in line with the state government's commitment to unleash the potentials of private sector and entrepreneurship in the state using small and medium scale enterprises. <laughs> Data from the Enugu state government shows that small and medium enterprises constitute 99% of economic activities in the state, with women championing most of the businesses. Their efforts and contribution to the state's internally generated revenue is well known to the government, who has gone ahead to put together a seminar to specifically teach them how to seize more business opportunities around them and grow capacity through government support programs and self-determination. The keynote speakers take the center state to educate them on available business opportunities and how to grow them effectively. Before you start a business, make sure that your business is addressing a need and not a want. So we need to stop wasting our time on things that are not important. And then to talk with people that will give us information following the innovation processes of applying new ideas improving where others stop will help us to increase our wealth addressing some of the issues registered by the attendants which bordered a lack of money as a key challenge the special advisor to the government small and medium enterprises anayo agu takes the stage what are you running away from if you also at the same time saying that uh, money is your issue. If we have money to give those who want to do business, including commercial agriculture, why are you not taking it? As the state government commits to helping residents create values through business counseling, access to credit, amongst others, one will also want to see more business friendly policies for greater investment. And from there, we move to Yobe State, where more states are already grasping the huge importance education plays at the nation's growth and the availability of a conducive learning environment. This is believed to drive learning in every state in Nigeria. And Yobe State is one government that has embarked on a project to renovate schools across the state, destroyed by insurgent activities and upgrade old systems. The governor, Ibrahim Gaydam, while inspecting the Nangere Federal School, reiterated his commitment to promote an education in the state. Improving the education system in Yobe State has been a top priority on the agenda of the Yobe State government. The government secondary school in Nangere local government area is the sixth school to be upgraded under the state government's reconstruction of schools project. Admin block, staff offices, classrooms, students' hostels, dining hall, library, laboratories, and parameter wall fencing with gatehouse and razor wire, including provision of the hall. It costs 403 million. 139,707 naira Providing standard classrooms, hostels, office spaces, laboratories, libraries, all essentials of quality education. The state governor says more will be done. This is the fifth school we renovated and um, punished fully. So uh, uh, we, it was our campaign promise that in each of the zones, we keep on renovating schools which were earlier established 30 years ago. They did not go undergo any kind of renovation. 
we, we, we want to make we want to make sure that uh, they are brought back to life. So this is what we have been doing. And in addition to that, even textbooks, inshallah, we are going to provide. The school principal relays his gratitude and that of the entire school. He believes the upgrade will help the teaching and learning process. And from the education sector, we will move to medical, but that's in a moment when News Across Nigeria returns. Stay with us.